It is the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician. <laughs> Dr. Drew, by the way. By the way. By the way, Dr. Drew, everybody, uh, showed up uh, to work about uh, 12, 14 minutes ago. Went into the uh, next room where the uh, sofa is. Uh, passed out. <laughs> Fell asleep for about four minutes. Eleven minutes. <laughs> well, fair. did you you walk straight in? Yeah, you went to bed. Yeah. I, well, I, I just walked in here one minute ago. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Fell asleep for uh, nine minutes in the uh, next room. It was essential. I would not have made it without that. Made what? Made this program. You haven't made it home. yet. We're 15 seconds into it. You're still going <laughs> to You're check still going to check out. Don't worry about it. I don't want to go through, through last night where I started laughing about nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got a little punchy at the end of the show last night. For those of you who uh, went to bed early, you missed out. And uh, just a warning for those Loveline listeners that like to tune out about 11.30, 11.40. The show really kicks into gear about 11.55, 11.56. Last night was a great example. Of that. At night. This show, uh, I tell you, we just put it in overdrive about 11.51. And, honey, we didn't stop until we went to commercial three and a half minutes later. Right, oh, Drew? God. We were laughing our asses off uh, last night, though. I haven't had that kind of good, good laugh in a while. Oh. And it, it does me good to see uh, you laugh like that, Tro. No, hey, your balls look like the uh, chin of an old Chinaman. No. That was uh, that was the topic, but uh, That's the story we just kept going. All right, uh, our guest tonight, and I'm not sure where she is, uh, Michelle Indegio Cello, is uh, a uh, very proud, uh, fine bass-playing woman who's, uh, well, she was in here, what was it, about two and a half years ago? Yeah. Three years ago? But she's a very impressive woman. Wouldn't you say it'd be a good way to describe yeah. her? Yeah, impressive. impressive. Yeah. So, uh, and a great musician. So she'll be in here whenever she gets in here. And uh, <laughs> so we do a lot of that on Loveline. We got a guest coming in tonight. Uh, they'll meander in at some point. And uh, here That's we go. Right. Was it Topher? Yeah. Topher, Topher just, just kind of burst in all of a sudden. Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah. From uh, that 70s show. Yeah. Well, there she is. <laughs> You know, I gotta say one thing about uh, our guests. They're late, but they're not even late. They're tardy. They're like a minute and a half, two minutes, 45 seconds. It's just important that we get the show started and then they make an entrance. All right, so uh, Michelle's uh, now here, and uh, she'll be in here in uh, a <laughs> few minutes, I guess. Uh, Megan? Yeah? You're uh, 15 years old? Yeah. What's going on? Um, okay, like um, a couple, like two months ago, I got out of a relationship that had been like going on for like six months. And um, he was he was a real jerk, but he, none of my friends liked him, and I had a lot of hard times with him. Mm -hmm. And now I have come out to my friend and told her that I am bisexual, and she thinks it's because of the relationship. And I was just wondering if that was true. Uh, you were of course bi before the relationship, right? No. No. Uh uh. Hmm. What happened? Anything? Mm. Tell him about your stepfather. No. Uh -oh. I have a real like um, <clears throat> real sexual sex stepfather but he like hasn't done anything like he'll just like do little stupid things like, like what touch the legs and shit oh sorry huh? well that's inappropriate and god knows what he did when you were younger isn't that in its own sort of twisted way worse in a certain way i mean than just sexual abuse is sort of you know amorous playful sort of courtship uh, it's, it's sort it's, of relationship you some, know it's more despicable and less, you know, it's not as sick, but it's less, it's more despicable. Yeah, there's something. It's like you really could think that it's something uh, clever and cute that he's doing. Or it's like, hey, we're falling in love. Yeah. You know, there's something extra dicey about yeah. it. Yeah. All right, so um, that, uh, are you sure this guy wasn't up to anything when you were younger? My stepdad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, him and I, we don't get along, like, at all. I mean, I'm always telling him to get you know back off and like he's always like back off yeah well i don't like he, i'm like always arguing with him we're always fighting and crap where'd your biological dad go oh uh, he's been out of the picture for a while why did he, he leave like, he was just he was a jerk to my mom so my mom divorced him mm. and he just made a lot of threats and stuff so he's mm. like on parole he can't come near us yeah, he was a violent guy yeah. yeah what a surprise that uh, mom hooked up with another winner 
Uh, yeah, I know. That's what I kind of say, but... Um, yeah. It's, 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 well, talk about coincidence, you know? Yeah. It's mind-boggling. Well, the, the odds must be uh, staggering. Moon, right? moon rock falling in your backyard. That's right, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, so, uh, Drew, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little short of brain cells tonight. What's going on with this question? Do you know what's going on? Well, the Drew, being, I need you to take charge right, tonight. Being bi has nothing to do with uh, having a dis disturbing relationship, right? Right. The fact that she chose an a-hole is because she'd lived with an a-hole for a stepfather and had an a-hole for a biological father and probably has a lot of ambivalent feelings about men. And being bisexual and wondering about women as potential partners certainly makes sense in the context of these awful relationships with men. Okay. So maybe it's not that you love, as wim wait, you love women as much as you hate men, but who cares? If you have the feeling, you have the feeling, right? Right. right. All right, but you're 15. Slow down. Right. Sort it out. Joy? Yeah. You're 23. Uh-huh. What's going on? I just wanted to comment that last night I heard the girl call in that she got pregnant on birth control. Mm-hmm. And I got pregnant on the same pill. With no doubt? Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't I hear don't about that pill that much. It's a pretty common one. Yeah. You don't name it when you name a lot of the, uh... Well, I don't name the... It's not one that... It's not one of the ortho ones that people often start with. And it's not one of the triphasics. It's one of the monophasics. So, yeah, there's, there's several of those. Many of those. Okay. Because uh, they were surprised, but it made me really, really sick. So I just thought that was why I got pregnant. Because you weren't keeping the pill down? Yeah, something like that. But they didn't know. So. Say that again? They didn't know what? Why I had got pregnant. You weren't taking any medication, any antibiotics, no. anything like that. Oh, okay. And you took it at the same time every day? Yeah, pretty much. But you think you might have been throwing the pill up? Yeah, because I, well, I was really, really sick. Well, well, were you sick because you got pregnant? No, I never had morning sickness. I see. You're pregnant now? No. <sighs> what what happened to the uh, fetus? The pregnancy. Oh, yeah, there it was. The baby? Yeah. yeah. All right. And she was born. And? And she's fine. Uh, with adopted parents? What do you mean with adopted parents? No, with... You, are you raising your child? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I have him. I just wanted to comment on that because that was weird. Okay. All right, and where's, uh, is Daddy around? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. That's nice. It, it is unusual. It's rare that it happens, but I guess it can happen. All right, Drew. Yep. I think, uh... You go home? <laughs> You're done? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need to really get it together, and I think you do, too, because, Look, you know, some... <clears throat> here, here's the way I got this show figured out. <clears throat> One of us comes in here sort of uh, with a half or quarter tank just about every night. But the other one overcompensates or compensates and makes, yeah. makes up for it. That one who usually makes up for it is me. You understand? <laughs> Even on nights when I got a quarter tank, I still make up for it. Now, I'm asking you for help tonight, Drew. I'm helping you. As a friend, as I'm a partner, helping. as a colleague, and as a lover. I'm here for you. Okay. <laughs> Start acting like it. you got to put out more. Though. Don, yeah. you're 15. Yes. What's going on? Well, um, a month ago, I had sexual intercourse with a guy friend of mine, like three days after my period. And I was wanting to know if there was any way that I could be pregnant because I haven't had my period for this month. So I'm like a week late. Don't you think if picking a particular time to have sex, if that were effective, we would sort of suggest that's effective? I don't know. <laughs> right? Well, then we tell people to do then. It is, it is effective. It's not effective. Okay, but let it's worthless. Me, okay, but let me put it this way, Drew. As compared to, forget your retarded analogies. Okay, <sighs> she's right when I was going to come out with a uh, hullabalooser of a retarded an analogy. Uh, here you go. Cut me off at the knee. Now, what I'm going to say is, is it makes a difference. The problem is, is it's such a Import, such an important issue right. that you can't leave anything to chance. Right. Be, right. When, when it's possible. 70% is not good. Right. Because that's 30% pregnant mm -hmm. or whatever it is. You, you know what I mean? It's not that kind of situation. If right. it's another aspect of life, you'd say, yeah, that makes makes sense. Do it like that. But not like this. tightrope walking over the Niagara Falls. Well, you've done it a hundred times. You only fell once. Right. Okay. Don? Yeah? Does that answer your question? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Now I'm stuck. What was your question? Though? What is it you're asking us? If there's any chance that I could be pregnant oh. or, I mean, since it's like three days after you had your period, I don't know if... Right. Now, what, did, what, what, what were you just talking about? Wait, wait, wait. What were you just talking about? Huh? 
<laughs> what were we just talking about? I don't know. <laughs> he, like, okay. lost me. All right, we're talking about the fact that you can get pregnant any time. Any time, even, like, three days after your Even period. during your period. And that if, if selecting a certain time of the month was an effective way to prevent pregnancy, we'd suggest you do that. But it's worthless. Doesn't doesn't prevent pregnancy, really. Do you want to ask your question again, Don, or you're all right with the answer now? Kind of, sorta. Do you do you all right, know what? Right, listen, all right, here's do you know what Drew was saying to you? <laughs> let me answer it's it. It's like you can get pregnant anytime. Let me That's answer. Right. Let me answer it this way. You're pregnant. Don't tell me that, please. Well, you might as well just assume you are until otherwise uh, notified. Now, can you take can she take the morning after pill, or has it been? Uh, already missed the period. Oh, she, 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 I'm all screwed up because. Yeah, well, stop telling us about it. We know that. Uh, all right, but she had. Uh, I thought she had the sex after her period, and then she and she's now missed her next period. Oh, honey. I'm a week late. Yeah. Well, Don, though, didn't you know that? I mean, when you called. Well, I wasn't really for sure because, like, what I learned in school and everything, mm. like, when you have your menstrual cycle, you know, the, like, egg goes out because it's, like, not needed or something. Yeah. And I really wasn't for sure. I talked to my health teacher about it, and he told me to talk to somebody else, and I can't talk to my mom because she'll have a fit. Well, All just right. get a pregnancy test. Maybe you won't be pregnant. I mean, there are other ways that the period can be delayed. Even, even Uh-oh. That's Drew's, uh, Drew's Mike Drew. Even even yeah, just the stress of uh, really what would have happened to you then? Kill I mean, myself. Cut adrift. Uh, I would have cut a fart. Is what I would have cut. Uh, even it, just the stress of worrying about being pregnant sometimes is enough, enough is enough to delay someone's period. Okay. Drew, are you drinking coffee? It just, it just fiercely. Okay. What do you what did you do today? What are you so wiped uh, out for? I, you came in here. You took a nap for you know nine minutes. What's I, going I on? I haven't slept in like three weeks. Oh, you haven't? just caught up with me finally. Went to, did the kids, uh, oh, did the kids parents' again. night? Did the parents' night? Did the kids' school time? Haven't you done enough for those kids? What do you do in parents' night? You sit in those little desks with you feeling like your your spine is going to break right out from under you. Right. And uh, you listen to what they're learning about and what the techniques they're using, what you have to do at home to keep it going. Oh, <laughs> no. Listen. Listen to me. Those kids are already smarter than they need to be. <laughs> do you understand? We're doing handwriting at home. We're doing reading, math, flashcards. Listen. Music flashcards. Listen. Those kids, they may... I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, does it help? Does it make a difference? Yeah. Drew, you think that kind of stuff makes people not only know more, but have the ability to gain more knowledge. Yeah. I think you either got it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. I can tell you for sure. I, it, I, I would have done it without a lot of training. Really? A lot, a lot, a lot. Would your folks go to parent-teacher night? Sure. They did? Mm hmm Really? You weren't embarrassed? Yeah. but You were? Sure. When Do you remember them going, like, when you were in, like, the fourth grade and stuff? Yeah. Oh, man. I'll tell you that. The open houses and parent-teacher nights and all that crap, that was... Uh, oh, man, and we and we get guilted, you know, high school, we get guilted into all kinds of constantly be of service and go to the classroom. And, I mean, it's like... Mm. Wow, they really want you to participate oh, in your yeah. children's education. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm sending my kids to public school. Yeah, they just go over there. Some kid beats the crap out of them with a tether ball. They work with clay. They uh, do some drugs, and then they come back home. You know, they learn how to doodle on uh, peachy folders. Mandy? Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's going on? All right. Um, I recently, about a couple months, uh, two months ago, I met a guy online, and now he's my boyfriend. And I met him, and I lost my virginity to him. Where's, how far away does he live? How far? Mm-hmm. Does he live for me? Yes. Uh, about an hour. All right. And how old is he? He's 19. Mm. 19 and 16. Yeah. Big three years there. Yeah. I know uh, anytime there's three years between a man and a woman, it's a huge... Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I love about this show. 48 and 51. That's, uh, that's a pretty substantial uh, three years there. But that's kind of big. Are you in the uh, 10th or 11th grade? Oh, I'm already graduated. I did the continuation thing. I'm done. <laughs> uh oh. What's up um, with that? But anyway. Why'd you do the continuation thing? <laughs> what did I do? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you do? Oh, uh, long story. <laughs> well, in, what, did, did they throw you out of school for something? No, I had like severe depression and uh, I went to boarding school and I came back to the continuation thing and now I'm in beauty school and I'm fine and everything's cool. When do you graduate beauty school? In about a month. 
Yeah. How long does it take to graduate beauty school? <laughs> About, it's 600 hours. So, like, three, four months. Yeah. And then you go, where? what do you do? Go to work for a salon? Like a day spa, because I'm going to be an esthetician. Wait, you live in Los Angeles, or A what? An esthetician. Facial, skin care. Nice. Waxing, all that. <laughs> to work on old women all night long. Yeah. <laughs> Waxing, yeah, there could be something for you here. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, pushing blackheads out of those old big schnozzes of theirs. That's a good gig. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, still... Hey, you'll be working in like a, a few months, right? Uh, yeah. Look at you, 16, joining yeah. the workforce. And that, what's this guy do? Is he driving El Camino? He works at McDonald's. <gasps> Ooh, 19 yeah. and at McDonald's. Yeah. yeah, but he goes to college. Yeah, what? Uh, milkshake college? No, it's a real college. No, it's not a real college. It's a junior college. Yeah. Yeah, that's no real college. No, it's it's a real college. Listen, but... junior college is uh, it's high school with ashtrays. <laughs> that's that's what that is in a, in a uh, snack bar where you can uh, score pot from the <laughs> guy who works in the shack. All right, so, Mandy, I don't trust this guy. He's going to junior college. Well, basically, He's working at McDonald's. My question is, or what my problem is, I went. I was home from school and I was sick, and I went online, you know, and I changed my screen name and how I met him, and I went under a different name and I spoke to him like a stranger, like I was someone else, and he flirted with me. I didn't flirt with him. I just said hi, and he asked me if I was single. Anyway, he t he asked this other girl who was me to be his girlfriend. And he told me he loved me, and all this stuff. He gave her her like, which was me, his number, his right. cell phone number. Oh, well, now I've done a complete 180 on this guy. He's a total player. He's a keeper. He's a player. <laughs> you can't go to junior college and work at McDonald's and be a player. You can go. You can. You can go to junior college, work at McDonald's, and be a guy who tries to get laid a lot. But that you cannot be a player. You can't even afford uh, sufficient player jewelry on your McDonald's salary. All right, Mandy. So you learned something. There you go. What do I do? What do you do? You marry him. Show him a transcript. And just, break you, just break up with him. He's, he's an, an idiot. idiot. Yeah. Come on. But I, I think because I did lose my virginity to him, that I have emotional stuff to him. That's fine, but you got to deal with that stuff. It's not. You got to realize that he's a, a prick. What about your commitment to me, Drew, in this show? <laughs> have you forgotten about that? The only thing he said to me was that it's an only the computer thing. And he doesn't do it elsewhere. Yeah, except oh, right. for the part about yeah, what's your phone number? You're now my girlfriend. I love you. Yeah, that's. That's uh, loser, right? a young. How old did you say you were in the in the web? Um, I said Nine. I was twenty one. Mm -hmm. And he said he actually likes younger, older girls. He's always wanted to have an older girl. Yeah. So <laughs> He's never been able to meet one though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mandy, come on. He's flawed. Seriously flawed. And everyone listen to me because I had no idea what her question was. She just described the guy to me and I told her to run. And then uh, lo and behold, he turns out to be an a-hole. All right, where the hell are we here, Drew? I'm starting to pick up a little steam now. Feeling good. Oh, you want to go to break? She's right when I'm hitting my stride. Let's get Michelle in here. Well, this is it. Okay. I, I don't know what Michelle's doing. She's here. She's, uh, she's, uh. What's she doing? She's All right. being respectful, not bursting. Oh, really? Like other guests. Oh, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, okay. I was just waiting for her to come in. I was stalling. I was tap dancing until Michelle came in. All right, then we'll take a break. Michelle and Deggio Cello is here. We'll uh, talk to her after this. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800. Oh, man, that's it, Drew. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, start, I'm starting to cry. 1 800 L O V E 191. Michelle Deggio Cello is our uh, guest tonight. Bitter's name of uh, the latest CD. And uh, she's touring, uh, are you touring in the fall with Sting. Yes, I am. You, uh, you've played with Sting, though, right? No, no. You no, haven't? No, no, you never no, played with him? No. But you played with everybody, haven't Pretty you? Pretty much, but he's a bass player. Oh, that's right. Room. <laughs> that's right. Uh -huh. I forgot about that. Yeah, so. Uh, Daddy, he's one of, um, he's he's one of, and uh, and this is, includes you, but I'm trying to think of uh, uh, what other bass players get out there and sing. There, there are a lot of them, and yeah. I just don't notice them. I think they're playing the guitar funny. Jack Bruce from The Cream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah Rush, Geddy Lee. Oh, well, you yeah. did, you've done your homework. <laughs> It's not the cream, is it? It's yeah, cream. Some cream. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm hip. Drew, you're hip to cream, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> As he holds his coffee from 1969. <laughs> that cream? Yeah, our listeners know Jack yeah. Bruce. And, uh, 
Wasn't uh, Ginger Baker in that band, too? Or is that the... Uh... That's the drummer. That's right. Yeah, All right. Some cream. All right. So, uh, uh, let's... Uh, so, what, when, well, what do you want to talk about? Want to talk about the new uh, CD? Are we going to hear something <laughs> off it? I heard you had to turn around and go get it. That's why... <laughs> That's why we. That's why you were late, right? Yeah, right. No, just uh, yeah. I'm, I, I don't really want to talk. I'm, I'm. Unfortunately, I'm not the really self-absorbed artist. You can play the music, and that's great, but I don't really feel like talking about it. I, uh, <laughs> you know, we haven't seen you in like three years, right. and um, we always talk about you. Right. I mean, not verbally, but I think we're thinking <laughs> about you. <laughs> Drew, I've got you thinking about Michelle, right? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. In fact, you just... A little just, twitch. You know, in the just sign, there. Right? No, he just goes, you're thinking about Michelle, aren't you? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're one of the few guests we've had on the show that's only been on one other time that we really like, that we you, put into our... You know, I've got three times. I've been right? on the TV show. Yeah, yeah, but this, the radio show... Once. Once. But, yeah, twice. No, I came on with the long guy from ago. Everclear. Yeah, yep. long time ago. Oh, was I here for no. the second time? it was time? at the different studio. Right. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, the point is, is it's been too long. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Thank and we you. like you. And, I, and I, it's Thank you. it's been uh, it's been too long in between trips. Okay. So we'll see if we can double up uh, right. on the love tonight. Right. So anyway, uh, we'll play something off bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, Sting coming up. Uh, how big is the uh, Sting tour? I think he's doing like four thousand seaters, and I'll be gone for about two months, starting in November. And is that who is going to play the? I mean, you're going to play the bass, but what's he going to play? He has, uh, no, uh, 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 I don't know. I haven't seen him. I haven't heard the new album, so I'm curious to see what he's doing. How did you I'm, get I'm, signed up for? No, I'm the opening act. Oh, I, I have thought the you opening were touring. Act I thought you were playing with Adam. him. No, no, Oh, no, okay. No, now no. I got it all straight. Maverick is kicking in. Now I'm doing my own thing. All okay. right. All right. Now I feel much better because I couldn't figure out what the, the two bases were doing uh, up there. No, just doing okay. the opening act thing. All right. Now I'm sleep deprived. That's right. why we're playing that. Okay. I'm good. Drew, you hip? Hip. Okay. okay, ready to take some calls? Yeah. All right. <sighs> Maggie? Hi. <laughs> You're 18. What's going on? Well, um, I have, like, a fiancé, and, um, I had, like, my first time with him, and, um, I, I, I could feel it, but I don't get, like, a, um, orgasm or anything like that. How old are you? 18. That will be pretty common at your age. And it was only the first time you only had sex with them once? Um, yeah, like, because I hardly ever seen him. He's in the Navy, but I, um... So it was one time? Yeah. The first time and only time uh, is usually not a particularly gratifying experience. I had it, like, uh, three times after that, and uh, it was not to happen. Well, I, I hope you had the dignity to fake an orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she did. She, you did? Very good. That's All right. horrible, Jerry. <laughs> that's Adam. Don't even I mean, don't confuse us. That's horrible. Ah, uh, yeah, that is. Well, no, if I, you're faking, the, 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 the brother's not gonna like kick um, in and figure it out. Right. That's right. There'll be. Uh, there's no reason to solve a problem if there's no problem. So, especially when it comes to the male ego, where they don't want to acknowledge that this could be a problem. Right. right. Um, Maggie. Yeah. Can you speak up a little bit? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, are you all right? I mean, here, here's what I'm hearing. Not only did you not have an orgasm, but it didn't seem particularly enjoyable to you. Well, yeah, it was, but... It was. I just thought, like, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a big difference, though, with women between their early part of their career and then what uh, I like to call the golden years. They get a little bit, uh, little bit of seasoning under their belt, quite literally. You, you know you, what I mean? Have you... Uh, Quite literally. Well, I mean, uh, under the belt. <laughs> no, I mean, when I said, uh, you know what I mean. Well, what under I, what the I mean, belt is literal. Like, the, the seasoning was literal. No, you idiot. I mean, there, what, Michelle, jump in here. But there's isn't there a big difference between eighteen and thirty for a oh, woman? Huge difference. But I, I guess my question is, uh, can you achieve orgasm by yourself? Right, that's the question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I never tried it. Okay, so there ain't no way you're gonna do it with a guy. Right. Right. That's something I think um, a lot of women don't explore because, you know, someone else doesn't necessarily know your, your, your rhythms, what you need, what feels good to you. you what do you to now, find it yourself. Why do you think women have such time 
finding that? Because by the time you're 11 or 12 years old, your sex pops up and stares you at, in your face when you're a guy. As a woman, it's something, you, you know, I got to get a mirror, I got to check you it know out. What? Your if, mother if, doesn't but, discuss it with you. Yeah, but you, no, nobody discusses it with guys either. In fact, they tell them, hey, get your hands off. And, and you, could, mm. you could hide that penis inside a vault and the guy would find it. Right. Right? And, as, and also... Right, Adam, but seriously. Well, I'm guessing if you're hiding his penis inside the vault, it'd be attached to right. him, so he'd whack off <laughs> no, in the but vault. You, but the point is... that <laughs> he'd probably use like $100 bills to wipe himself off the, or something. The point is, for, for, for the male biology, it, it's not about that. It, it, it's just the guy will it just does that. It's just what they do. Well, but Michelle was saying that for a guy, yeah, the thing just the thing just pops but, up and you, you go for it. But it's not about it. Just no. I, what are you no, saying? You're saying Don't your, disagree your with the guess. Kicks in at that. I'm age. saying you, that you want to that even if you, you lopped off a male's penis, he'd still figure out a way to masturbate. <laughs> Seriously, I, I really believe that's true. Yeah, I think there's a little more of a biological right. imperative for right. males, especially at that age. Just because 95% of 15-year-old males right. masturbate and 40 or 28 or right. whatever percent of females at 15 masturbate. And right. women are a little more complicated, a little more right. complex. That's what I'm saying. And, and I can and tell you, a while to figure it out. I can tell you when it comes to little boys, you tell them all the time, hands off. Hey, right. cut, hey, hey, not here. Right. All the time, right? It's not like you're saying that to little girls. You don't. You not. You don't have to. My mom uh, said it all. That no jacking off in the house. <laughs> that was her. That was her policy. You should go to like um like a store that uh, an erotic store, an erotic boutique, and right. you know maybe buy a vibrator, um or some books on different. You know, masturbating techniques and just have some time with do, yourself. Do you think yourself. that women, it, now looking back on where you've been, you're, you're, mm -hmm. I don't want to put you in an awkward position, but that there's something about how you develop emotionally and your ability to access sexual functioning? Right. Um, definitely. I was very lucky. I mean, things, extremely things lucky. Right no, I just had a partner that was like, you know, you're supposed to get more out of this than just laying there and, and you know. <laughs> Let me do what I want to do. Yeah. So luckily, I had a male partner that was like, you know, you know, help me work that through. Drew, and, had, yeah. same story with Drew. <laughs> it was his on call. <laughs> It was, a, it was one of the, it was the best summer in Idaho you'd ever spent. Is it? Is that not true, Drew? Kelly. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> Kitty. Hi. Idolina, let's just uh, compromise. Hey, the Isthmus of Kelly. You're uh, 17 years old. Yeah. First, Let's... I'm the guy to tell you, I think you're so hot. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Um, okay. My question is, is that... Okay. Michelle doesn't see it, but okay. <laughs> um, me and my best friend, she, like, we are very close. She lived with me for a long time, and at one point, we had a couple of threesomes with a couple of different people, and... I don't know, it's like um, kind of weird because we spent so much time together and lately she moved to um, another country and like she called me a lot and whatever and like the last phone conversation we had she told me she loved me more than a friend and I don't know how to tell her it's kind of weird because she's coming to stay with me for a while and it's kind of, like I don't know how to tell her that I'm not like that and like keep her as a friend, I don't want to hurt her feelings. So you're 17, how old is she? She's 18. And you've had a few threesomes? Yeah. Were you with her during these threesomes? It was me, her, and um, a guy. No, but I mean, were you and she... Oh, we would just kiss. Like, I, you know, I would never do anything. She, like, asked me a couple of times, but I wouldn't yeah. do it. You're a little bit prude, are you? No, not I'm that not kind of girl. Prude. It's just I'd rather have... Well, you, your sensibilities girl. are a little bit more old-fashioned. Well, guys please me more than girls, too. So. Right, and... Uh, and so she's she's bisexual or maybe lesbian and, and no, and, she's, like she's never mentioned anything like that. Right, but like, but now she's in love with you now, right? I think so. This okay, is, so she's something now, but she didn't want to do stuff with you when no, you got. She did. She, she did. did. But yeah, you didn't. She would ask me and stuff, and like I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I'm more attracted to guys than girls. I'd love to hear the guy's reaction while uh, <laughs> she was asking Kitty to do something. The guy'd be like. Uh, come on, uh, yeah. okay, sarah, sarah. Come on, come on. <laughs> and I didn't know what you know. It's kind of awkward because I didn't look at her like that, like in such a sexual way. I think she's beautiful and everything. Right. But it's just I I don't get pleasure out of, out of going down on a girl. Shoot me down in flames. What prompted the threesome? <laughs> yeah. What well, made you two want to like? We thought it would be fun. <laughs> but you you did it you did it a couple of times, right? Uh, yeah. And. The first time you did it, you got the feeling that she was a little bit attracted to you, right? 
Well, the first time it was with one of my ex-boyfriends. And, like, it started out where I was with him and then she kind of joined in. Sure. And, and you know what I mean? It was like, yeah, I'm going to make a prediction that the, these two, like, are planning a career in, like, stripping or something. <laughs> Yes. Um, no, no, no. I don't. I don't mean to be, to be pejorative about it. It's just. It's, and she also took the, the um, kind of boundary talking. issues and powerlessness. Right. And yeah, it was like she kind of. You know what I mean? She took me to. Um, we went to the city once. She took me to get my tongue pierced. Great. And she was like, you know, you can get, you know, like what that means and stuff. And well, like, it's just and she like took me to a sex shop. Bit of a role model. <laughs> She's like it's like a, the mentor program. <laughs> Big sister. Uh, so, uh, what what are you? Are you going to high school, Kitty? Yeah. You are? Mm-hmm. And how's that going? It's great. Oh, it is? Yeah, I got kicked out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We got to do, do a love line uh, reenactment here for, uh, for your listening pleasure. So, uh, Kitty, do you, you go to school? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. High school? Yeah. How's that going? It's going great. Got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What did you get? Uh, you kicked out for uh, what? Uh, too high a score on your SAT or? Assault. Hmm? Assault. Assault? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, okay. Right. <laughs> I see. Who's the assault? Um, a girl who, like my father, passed away, and she oh, was boy. going around telling people that he molested me. Did he? That's not true. No. Who did molest you? Nobody did. Something. And I've never been abused or anything like that. Nothing really. Really, my parents were together. They loved each other, and then he passed away. What did he die of? I'm a brain aneurysm. How old was he? He was 42. Oof. Oh, boy. So... How old were you? I was eight. You Eesh. were eight? Yeah. So oh, this might, this might that's that. it. Yeah. That's it. Because, you know, Kitty, to, to be honest, you, you, you really fit the profile of someone on this show who's uh, had some trauma. Yeah, I mean, I suffer with panic attacks. Yeah. Um, I have manic depression. And, and, and it's probably the loss of your father. We, we, oh, it we, definitely is. I and, go to therapy. And, and the biology of manic depression here, too. Right. right. Okay, and, baby. Hey, uh, can you slow down a little bit with all the activity? Yeah, I, I kind of started really young. You're going to end up with an HIV? How young? I, I'm always protected. I, I'm on the pill. How, and I have the pill's not going to protect you against <laughs> HIV, but what, uh, you understand that? Yeah, I always use protection, though. Condoms. And I have a diaphragm and everything. No, like, condoms. Do you use condoms? I use condoms. And you said you lost your virginity at a young age? Oh, no. I just started with sexual behavior at a young age. And how old? Um, around 15. All right. Okay. That's not terribly young. Mm -hmm. But, boy, honey, you've been making up for it ever since. <laughs> Kitty's like, oh, no, listen, I'm safe. I, um, I got an IUD. use condom. <laughs> nor plan. I take the Depravera shot and, on the pill. And, I use a and, sponge. And diaphragm. And I use a diaphragm. <laughs> Fram and uh, <clears throat> I'm protected. Yeah, and a certain kind of tea I drink. That uh, I guess it's kind of like I mean, ever since um, my father passed away, I've become very codependent with like right. I'll become very close with one person. Okay, yeah. I was, and so I've lost a lot of friends, and I don't want to lose her. Here's the thing, Kitty. You could afford to lose her. You really could. Mm -hmm. She's a very troubled person. Doesn't mean she's a bad person. Just means she's a troubled person. And at 17, it's it's hard to handle troubled people especially yeah. when you're a big fixer and uh, have right. your own issues right you will go down you'll go down with them I, I think this is an interesting point because there's a lot of 17 18 16 year olds whatever they have friends they're they're good people but they're troubled they're right. real troubled and it's hard to say you know to tell them to walk away from a friend of theirs but you'll go with them too i mean you need to have your own thing going on and you don't have it at 17 you don't have your own house your own job your own car your own husband or wife or partner or whatever you don't have your own thing and you'll just You'll just spin out with your friends. And uh, even though they're good people, they, they will take you with them. So she needs to get away from this person, sort of... Uh, and back into school. Uh, yeah. That's right. Oh, break. School's going great, except for the uh, the battery charge. <laughs> she said that was such gusto. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, great! Great! <laughs> Right. I think she was like in a, you know, the, the uh, baton club, team yeah. and the chess club and the uh, Madrinas Escaderos. It's like the Spanish club, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Michelle Degocello is uh, here. The album is uh, Bitter. I think we'll, oh, I think we'll hear something off of that. Uh, Anderson, where is that? We, we don't have it. What's going on with that? Uh, oh, they went to go get it. Oh, I... Okay, I'm cool. Ooh. All right, now you're, I got it all worked you're out. You're cool. <laughs> this is on tape, right? That my record company forgot to bring the record. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you can play this back at the Ooh. next meeting. All right. <laughs> all right, we'll uh, take a break. We'll be back. Love Line. Be right back in a minute. Love Line, 
I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. And, hey, I got through the phone number without screwing it up. You know I'm, uh, I'm making a big comeback. Yeah, but you said of responding to internal <laughs> stimuli. You're, like, laughing to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I slept uh, three hours uh, last night. I slept uh, three hours the night before. Why? What are you all doing? <clears throat> I, I was doing a uh, commercial. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about it, but, well, I don't know what I'm not supposed to say, so I'm just going to talk about it. Tell, uh, tell. It was like one of those uh, phone call commercials, you know, those uh, call this, you know. What those, uh, things. Yeah, but they'll say the name, you idiot. <laughs> Leave that out. Leave it out. Oh, Leave who out. cares? <laughs> I, I don't care. No, Leave no, no. what I said. I didn't say. That's not the right company. <laughs> <laughs> The point is, is I've been shooting these things all mm -hmm. day, and they come pick me up at 5.30 in the morning to do these, and I haven't been getting out of there until about 8 or 8.30 at night. And For something that's going to be 30 seconds long. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's without the, like, legal ID and stuff at the end. I, never was there uh, more time put into less. I mean, I swear to God. Yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so bizarre because when you do something like this show... Two hours translates into two hours. I mean, it's it's pretty much real time. I mean, we're here about seven minutes longer than the show right. is on the I, air. Actually, last night I signed off and I sent out right off at mid midnight. As I drove out at twelve midnight and thirty seconds, I was pissed off at you because <laughs> you were just signing off at twelve oh two. I left. Uh, I left before the the no, last commercial. No, no, it's not that. It's that you normally you normally sign oh, like two minutes after midnight. That's right. I thought, geez, we should be out of here at midnight. That's right. That's right. We uh, we we do two hours worth of show and we're here for two hours and six minutes. But TV commercials, you're there for sixteen hours and that translates into twenty two seconds. Yeah. And oh my god, and it's not even particularly fascinating. <laughs> 22 seconds. So for that kind of ratio, you should really be getting a lot more pop than you actually right. get. But they pick me up two days in a row at 5.30 in the morning. I go to bed at 2. And uh, I just was going insane. Sleep deprivation, I mean, uh, it ain't like you need a week of it. Two, two, three days, and you're ready to talk. And you're numb. Yeah, and, and the first thing that goes is you're sort of, motor skills are fine. It's just, uh, you, you don't think linearly or something. You have trouble with names and numbers. and Feeling well, a little punchy. Is that's that right. <laughs> well, it's like, linear, like thinking becomes work. Like it has yes. to be started, and you don't want to start. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm just going to just uh, take the chair that's inside of my head. I'm going to lean it back. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put the newspaper on my face. I'm going to put my feet up and uh, kick my shoes off. And uh, Drew and Michelle are going to carry the rest of the show. All right. Here's your chance to shine, folks. Uh, Joe? Yeah. You're 20. Yeah, that's right. What's going on? Um, yeah, I was at this party, and um, I met this girl, and I went upstairs with her, and uh, we got it going on, and um, I stuck uh, my penis in there about a quarter of an inch, and I was, uh, went outside, and I was like, I gotta get a condom, so I uh, went to my friend and got a condom, and on the way back into the room, I went into the bathroom, because I had to urinate, and uh, I started to uh, piss like a uh, red color blood, um, it was kind of like a Kool-Aid. It was uh, really diluted, and then right at the end of my piss, I uh, I, sh I shot out like two blood clots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I was just curious. I asked a lot of my drunken friends that they gave me a lot of opinions. <laughs> well, why didn't you go see a doctor right at that point? Um, well, I haven't I haven't done this for uh, I haven't done it again for like uh, it was like about a month and a half ago. Well, well, that's that my was, question. That was, yeah. Okay. Well, listen. He's not going to give you a good answer. That was just from a quarter inch. Oh uh, yeah. But Imagine if you gotten the whole two and a half inches in there. <laughs> okay. What what is that? Yeah, what is well, that? Well, blood in the urine has many. Uh, it's a whole list of potential causes, about as long as your arm. Anything from kidney stones to bladder cancer to prostate problems. I mean, there's it, lots. It doesn't have anything to do with a woman, does it? No. I, I didn't think it would because no. I didn't feel how he could, uh, how like a disease could creep up inside my body. That no, it couldn't be urine infection. But could it have been that he had an erection for a prolonged period of time and yeah. uh, you know rolled over on it funny no. or something? No, but it may be some some blood vessel broken, the urethra, or some real urethra irritation from something. I mean, there is a million different. Yeah, you know, there's, there's hundreds of different causes of this, and it all needs to be defined. Okay. So you need to see a urologist. All right. Yeah, because, I just haven't seen any. Um, it, it done. It hasn't done it again. Uh, Joe, I don't care if it never happens again. It happened, and it needs a diagnosis attached to it. All right. Okay. All right. And that's the way it goes. One of these things. Is, if there are certain the, things in medicine where it's like, uh, well, I had rectal bleeding, but it's not. It's not come back ever since. It's like, 
Well, look, this is not. A, there are certain things that once they happen, that's it. They have to be explained. That's it, because the the potential causes are quite serious and quite treatable if they're caught early enough. Okay. Now, maybe not then. Maybe none of those things. But once you have it, even if it never happens again, it needs a diagnosis. That's it. Okay. Hey, Drew, I remember my speech earlier about you sort of uh, rallying. Rallying. And yeah, that's what I'm doing. I have. It's, let's, let's, it's, it's a well, little disturbing, look, so let's look, slow look, down a little with the rallying. I understand, but I'm trying to fill time. Here's what I want you to do, I don't Drew. want you to have to talk. Here's what I'm saying I'd like you to do. I know you think of the show as 50-50, but the reality is, is I do about 80% of the work night in and night out, and you do about 20%. So what I'm asking you to do tonight is not 80%. But fifty percent, which is what you should normally doing, but would seem uh, like you would be like, doing more. You this know this what I'm like saying? Complaining about place kickers that so don't work hard enough. <laughs> you know, hey, if you make you make you put the ball through the uprights, that's all that counts, True, right? True. That is the first halfway decent analogy. <laughs> Uh, well, I've I'm, heard you make in four years. I wanted to be up fifty percent tonight. Wow, okay. Mason. Yeah, you're nineteen. I am. What's going on? Not a lot. Uh, I just wanted to say you guys uh, rule. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking my call. But really, this uh, this is for Michelle. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. I'm a bass player as well. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you're coming out with any booklets or uh, videos, anything like that? Uh, no time soon, but I have an article coming out in Bass Player next month. Yeah. And uh, that should, it's pretty informative. <laughs> All right. Well, do you, do you discuss technique and that sort of thing? Or I discuss lack thereof. I, I have a different approach to, than, than, but, than. But something, something a young guy like Mason could read and you know pick up a right. tip or two. Definitely. It's, yeah, I'll it's take in it this out. next article. Uh, when are you coming to uh, Denver? Um, probably at the end of November. November. Yeah. Where are you playing? I'm not sure. They never tell you this till yeah. you get on the bus. <laughs> Uh, bus. You yeah. don't get to go to that lovely airport. Sting thing. on a bus. <laughs> yeah, the, the airport that's in uh, Yuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's uh, right. That's it's my not, favorite it's not place. Early in Colorado. <laughs> All right, Mason. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you, Michelle. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Oh, the airport I nice spent guy. half my life these days. At the airport? The Denver airport. Yeah. <laughs> Everything goes through Denver now. <laughs> it's a nice airport. If only there was a city uh, in, <laughs> nearby. Within 150 <laughs> miles of the place. Mary? Mary Jane. I mean, uh, Mary Jane? Oh, Ooh, all gone. What was her problem? Mary Jane, you gone? All right, I'm just going to the next one, all right? Craig? Yeah. You're 18. What's going on? Uh, first of all, I want to tell you guys, you know, I love your show on TV, too. Thanks. And, uh... Oh, yeah, big like... new season of Loveline starts next week, right? Uh, yeah. Does that start next week? They've Ooh. been promoting the hell out of it. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> You've seen the, the, uh, on the, the bus, the bus <laughs> signs and uh, on the park benches. And, but it is, uh, is going to be a good season, I think. I, the shows we did last week were very good. Yeah, but well, that may be about it. We, I think we may have shot our wild last well, week. Well, they wisely gave us a week in between. Oh, yeah. Craig? Yeah. All right, what's uh, up? I'm kind of stuck in between, like, two women. Like, one of them is my ex-girlfriend, and the other one is one of her friends. Mm -hmm. And I still have sex, like, with my ex-girlfriend. And I'm not sure, like, if I should pursue either one or just, you know... Wait a minute, one is your ex? Yeah. How long have you guys been broken up? Uh, for about two months. I'm, I'm totally confused. And you're still having sex, and then there's her friend who you like, but you've never been out with. No, like, I've gone out with her, but never did anything well, with Give your ex a break. If you're not into her, mm -hmm. let her go. Well, I, mean, I don't understand why she's even an ex. I don't get that. Well, because Craig kind of... I'm still, like, emotionally and physically attached to her. Like, she... Like, well, then why is she your ex? Pardon? Then why is she an ex? Because uh, we went through just, like, a lot of things. Like, we fought a little bit, and it was just, like... We went through a thing where she was, like, interested in other guys and that. All right, but who broke up with who? It was a mutual... Really? Yeah. But See, there was our, no our, up. <laughs> yeah, there's no. <laughs> well, they're emotionally uh, an open relationship. They still, they still have a uh, a bond, and then they have sex, and they see each other about four days a week. <laughs> well, the thing was, like, the whole thing is, like, she's tossing me like kind of mixed signals. All right, here's the, here's the advice. Here's the advice. I don't. It doesn't matter what y you do, but you've got to decide what you're going to do with this relationship with your quote ex unquote. Either you get back with her, 
or you totally cut it off. The, this situation is completely unfair to her. And if you then, after breaking it off, want to go out the other one, go out with the other one. Well, if you decide to get back with the ex, then end the other yeah, one. Yeah, it's unfair to you, too. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I don't yeah, care about Craig. He's an idiot. Yeah. But Drew assumes, yeah. and he's probably right, usually when there's a relationship that gets into that sort of sexual maintenance thing, it usually means the female is yeah. still interested yeah. in keeping the relationship I alive. Another way. If really? she was interested in other people, which he commented yeah. on. You that, know, that could be that could be true too. This may be an exception. Like, I want to go play with the chickens, but I'll stay in the hen house kind of thing. Well, yeah. you know, we've got a couple decent analogies going <laughs> in the same uh, five minute period. All right, I'm going to come back with my own barnyard or uh, playing field analogy. Talk about balls again? When we, yes, when we come back. Hey. Nate, it is Love Line. We will uh, take a quick 10 second timeout. We'll be back with more of the fabulous show in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. While you're sitting there on your bottom sucking on a drink, try to remember why you signed on in the first place. Portland's New Rock Alternative. <laughs> Hey, all kinds of things they have here that we do not get exposed to. Yeah, like ice. I didn't know we had ice. Milk. Michelle Degacello is our uh, guest tonight. Her new uh, CD is called Bitter, and uh, I was just told that uh, Rolling Stone gave it uh, four and a half stars, which is uh, pretty damn impressive, and uh, Vibe Magazine called it the uh, album of the year. And uh, I think we're going to uh, now put those critics to the test. See how smooth that transition was, Drew? This is uh, from the uh, CD, Bitter. This one is called Grace. Yeah, that is uh, Grace from uh, Bitter from uh, Michelle Degocello, and uh, that's good. Man, that really sounded good. Thank you. And uh, Drew uh, paid Michelle uh, one of the highest compliments he's uh, ever uh, paid an artist on the show, which is, uh, hey, can I have that CD? <laughs> <laughs> but that means a lot because Drew normally doesn't want them. In fact, I went over the top. I started, started challenging you for it. Yeah. See, he was, uh, how about it? And then I thought, well, all right, but I don't, I'm, I'm going to put up a little argument because Michelle's sitting here. You know what I mean? I can't go, hey, whatever. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, I got to go, oh, I got the last one, so I guess... No, but uh, I, did you bring more than one? Yeah, we, we can't, we don't want to pay for CDs anymore. Lisa, here, so. Lisa, we talked to line two already. I'm going to hang... All right, Drew, don't, to Drew, don't, up on Drew, don't get weird. I was, uh, I was trying to have a conversation. And line one there. wasn't on the line. Hey, hey, there now. hey, Drew? Yeah, let's go. What, do you got your own, like, earpiece in? <laughs> you're like, out, you're like, like a secret dude. service. I'm talking to our guest, damn it. <laughs> anyway, that's a nice sounding song. Thank you. I'm going to take the other CD and let Drew have the broken one. <laughs> Fine. Not the CD itself, just the box. Jackie? Hi. You're 18. Yeah, I'm 18. What's going on? Um, well, I've, like, been to the doctors within, like, the past couple of months. I've had, like, a bladder infection, like, bladder infections, like, once every three weeks. Are you sexually active? Yes, I am. Well, that's called honeymoon cystitis. It is? It's from having sex. It, uh, that's blasts those, positive? yeah, blasts that bacteria right up your urethra and into your bladder. Oh, is there anything I can, like, do about it? I well. I've gone on medications and stuff. Yeah, some women actually have to take antibiotics chronically because of this, or at least have it available to them chronically. Is yeah. that be careful with your position and try to find ways that you can engage in this encounter without causing the infection? Well, what? You evacuate your bladder afterwards, drink yeah. lots of fluids. Uh, now, yeah. How big a role does gravity play in this? What? I mean, you're talking about position. Actually, a lot of women complain about when they're on top. Oh, well, they get because yeah. they get deeper penetration? I guess. I don't know. Um, and is this, is this, um, I mean, women, women who don't have sex get plenty of these too, sure. right? Oh, yeah. But uh, you just get more. It gets irritated, right? Mm -hmm. does it actually, does it get the, what? How does it get pushed up the urethra? Isn't it from the end? Give me my give me my diagrams again. Okay. <laughs> True. You know, I got to masturbate when I get home tonight. And you know, when I look at that book with all the text the and the pelvises. specific That's drawings, how, right. that pushes it up. Ow. But Jesus. would lube, extra lube help? No. So you're not forcing it? No, it's not about the forcing. It, uh, it will. That causes irritation. That's yeah. an interesting point. But it really. As I understand it, and as I, I think theories go, it's just about bacteria right. being in the area, mm -hmm. and something pushes up against your either and pushes it in and gets in there. And All right, so you urinate after you have sex. Mm -hmm. You have plenty of fluids. You have plenty of fluids just in general? Yeah, Take well, plenty of um, 
my doctors like completely cut me off of like caffeine because I guess they say that like holds in the bacteria or something. Yeah, it irritates your urethra too. Yeah, so. so I've like not I don't drink soda, I don't drink like, you know, carbonated drinks, I don't drink anything but like cranberry juice well, and just, basically water is like, my like drink. Yeah, just to sort of explore ways you might position one another such that this isn't as likely to occur. What's the deal with cranberry juice in these infections? It Everyone's is, always talking about it's, cranberry it's, juice. It's fluid and acidifies the urinal bed and so it helps a little bit. But what if you're a cran apple man like myself? Is that gonna so you have to double up on the I oh, drink drink yeah. more. I understand. I think it's worth it, you know, for the cran apple. Right, Drew? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were Clamato, man. Mario? Yes. No? Uh, I'm Beef Motto. Adam, what's And uh, Tongue Motto, which is the uh, <laughs> zesty <laughs> taste of uh, cow tongue <laughs> and tomato juice. Oh, my God. That's the zesty. Product. Oh, yeah. So is, tongue Motto. So is my question, um, basically, is, is can, you, can your girlfriend or can anybody be swallowing too much? <laughs> swallowing too much or what? Semen, sperm. Oh, really? I mean, that... My girlfriend had a lot, have a lot of oral sex, and it's not something that she does because I ask her to. It's something she does because she really likes it. Well, if you were infected with something, it really any is too much. But and certainly you could upset her stomach. I mean, she could. Okay, now her. would that would mean like, like or around like a range, like how much would be. It's been different for different men. Couple of courts, a like court and a half a week. On average, me and my uh, my girlfriend might do it maybe three, maybe four, three to four times in a week. Now hold on one second, there, Mario. Let me have a discussion. I've got a little partners there. here. First of all, Mario's uh, twenty-five. Sounds like he's fourteen. Oh, I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was seventeen. S secondly, he's one of these guys. So it's like uh, I'm getting blown, and uh, I want the, the world to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm guessing he hasn't had a ton of this in the past. Mario, yes. you don't have a long history of being blown, do you? Do I have a long history? Um, no, yeah. not really. No. Yeah. I mean, this is the first girl that's really... No, no, because I was married. I'm divorced. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, that's why you... Ever. No, but this is like, this is the first time I'm getting, you know, Swallowed. that. Right. The first time I'm getting the complete job. That's nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, nothing says I love you, like a big uh, <laughs> esophagus uh, full of <laughs> semen. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm going to throw off. All right. And Mario? Yes. Yeah, she's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know why uh, people people assume. I mean, certainly, uh, there's got to be worse elements in a corn dog than there would be in, uh, you know, eight cc's of semen, in right? A, in an uninfected individual, yeah. Right. The belch must be interesting. Oh. Yeah, especially, if it's, especially when it com comes out in the form of a large bubble. <laughs> Just like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert? Oh, wait a minute. We just Didn't we just talk to him? No. Oh, we didn't? Oh, geez. Hey, Robert? How can I follow that one up? I don't know. It's not going to be easy, but you can try. You're 25. Bring, bring us back. Uh, well, first of all, uh, hats off. You guys are doing a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you know what's funny about this show? One out of, once, once, like, every two weeks, three or four people call and tell us we're doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it is. I mean, it's, 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 uh, you guys are, you know. No, I, I appreciate that, but it always comes, it's always three or four in one night, and then we don't hear it for a month. Well, it, what we also find interesting is that a lot of, it eludes a lot of people that we are trying to do some good. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, especially the television world seems to have difficulty accepting that. Yeah, everything is just, uh, hey, guys are funny, or those are like screwed up kids, or uh, good ratings, or something. Everyone misses. The part about actually attempting to do something, make a little impact, and then all, you know, all the, there's no, like, award categories or anything for any shows. Not that I'm saying that. Well, yeah, I, I won a goddamn award. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Jimmy got one. Yeah, my partner, uh, Jimmy, got a daytime uh, Emmy, the son of a bitch. He, he has it mounted on the hood of his car. You know what's And funny? I get nothing. I got a shine award. That's nothing. That was a nice piece of loose But who, uh, I think when we did the TV show last week, we had about, what, half, uh, ten guests or something. Right. Think of who actually got the show. Buddy Hackett. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I got the show. No. Yeah. <laughs> buddy, buddy yeah, that's it. right. Jesus, surreal. He started crying. <laughs> he was crying. <laughs> well, he was, he was drunk. Let's be fair. <laughs> he got the show as much as he was drunk. No, Buddy, uh, Buddy really appreciated the show. Yeah. It's it's bizarre when Buddy Hackett is telling you what the good work you're doing with the kids. And what happens used to be back in the day was he and Joey Bishop used to have to. That's right. Edit everything they wanted to say. 
Yeah, I've been on the love boat all the time, every other week. Is that right? <laughs> all right, Robert. Hey, Drew, let, let's not go down this path. That's the Buddy Hackett path here. Let's get back on, on course. What's going on there, Robert? Well, um, it looks like Dr. Drew is going to earn maybe all 50% tonight, right now. All right, go ahead. Um, I'm a I'm pretty sexually active. I, I have been. I, I got kind of a late start. Um, that was a sort of like a religious upbringing. I have no weird vibe or feeling about How it. How late? Huh? How late? Oh, 20 years old. All right. Yeah. There's, you know, not, nothing weird about that or anything. But um, anyway, I um, cannot, I have sex, but I cannot orgasm with a woman. Same person? No, different, different, different people. How many? Oh, um, I kind of, it can't, I mean, it's just yet to happen. I mean, I, have, I haven't. No, but how many people have you been with? Um, dozens, I don't know. Dozens? Yeah. Dozens? And no, no orgasm with any of them? Well, I, I got a, I got the old hand job one time, which kind of worked. But you see, here's, 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 like the, here's the kicker. It's like, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not even, like, it's hard for me to even get fully erect. Um, with them. I mean, I, I know, like, you know, when you're, like, 80% there, it's enough to, like, do, it's, right, everything's you're going. It's, it's, you're not on medication? No, no medication, and then masturbation's fine. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, 100%. What do you there. think about when you masturbate? I'm definitely, I just, I, I knew you were going to pop in there, Adam. Women, Adam, women. Was, women. You know, kind of, and part of it, you know, <laughs> half my show, i got to say something. <laughs> uh, you think about women. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it, absolutely love I, I don't know. You know what? It's kind of weird. I wasn't getting the vibe that uh, Robert was gay. I just was getting the vibe that women didn't particularly turn him on. I don't know where that puts you. Oh, no way. Somewhere I mean, in that. Women, women are it. All right, but you're having difficulty getting erection. You can, all the plumbing's hooked up. Masturbation's no problem. Right. You have no problem getting women. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Drew, didn't we have this call last night? Yeah, or we did. Close to yeah, it? we did actually. And, and we, we said we never really hear this one. Yeah, we had not much to tell him. What gives you the motivation to be with so many women when you know there's no payday? Because they're just they're because they're just so damn it. But see, that's that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Is, is it an overwhelming experience to be with women? Is it like, oh no. my god, I mean, I'm so into it. I'm I, just... I've, I've I've been with women that are like like. Incredibly beautiful, but with women, they're like, eh, whatever. But listen, is it overwhelming in the sense that it's just just so exciting to you to be with somebody that you just get consumed? Up, no. uh, performance anxiety, you just get so anxious. Well, anxious. Hey, we're trying to go all to going towards anxiety because anxiety is the thing that prevents men from functioning. You know, some, I, sometimes I almost feel like it's a sensitivity issue. I mean, like a physically, physically sensitive, physical sensitivity issue because it's. Like the physical arousal sometimes seem like it's not, not quite you know, like the sen literally the physical sensation. Do you masturbate a lot? Uh, probably not as much as Adam. So not three times a day. <laughs> no. Um, Thank you for weaving me in in a dignified way, Robert. <laughs> uh, okay, but Adam's not a sexual compulsive. Is the condom the thing? Is uh, when you put on the condom, it doesn't feel as good? I don't well, think yeah, but every guy's gonna say that. Are you wearing a condom? Yes. Every time? Um, well, one person that I was with at a with for an extended period of time. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, Robert. Yeah. I, I don't know what the answer is. It, it seems like if you fell in love and you got with a, one partner and you really worked it out with that one partner, things would kind of fall in line. And, and that's sort of where our quandary is, too, though. If, if 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 this happened to you, Adam, you'd be like working on it like uh, I'd have a team of yeah. scientists. Yeah, I mean, why is he working on this? Is sort of what's kind of bizarre. But I'd I'd, I'd, I'd it. go down to the uh, Mayo Clinic and uh, at oh, Johns Hopkins, and I'd, I'd make make an announcement. Uh, I'd get on the PA. Uh, listen, uh, hold up, all scientists and uh, researchers, uh, cancer, AIDS. Let's just hold off on that for a while. I cannot get sperm to come forth from my penis when I'm with a woman. Now, we're going to tackle this issue. I wish you Godspeed. And when we resolve it, we can get back to work on the world's major problems and diseases. Thank you. I'll be in the lunchroom. Do they have an address system there, Drew? Well, you would put one in. You would put in if, if you needed <laughs> uh, to speak on that issue. Yeah, it, it, it's funny that he's with dozens yeah. of women and yet doesn't have... It sort of plan. knows. I mean, yeah. after the first 15 chicks, wouldn't you get an inkling on, like, number 16 that 
You may be drunk. you may be in for some trouble I, at the end of the night. Have, does he go back to these same women and do it again, no, or is some. it intimacy? Uh, I mean, well, it's all it's probably all these things. But here's what I here's what I think. Everybody and 25 is a little bit late because most people get this at 17 or 19 or whatever. But everyone has that one person that they work it out with, that one partner that they experiment with that they figure out no, w things with that, that shows them no. stuff i mean you can have a bunch of one night stands and a bunch of sort of drunken whatevers in the back of cars you don't learn that much mm -hmm. but you do find that one person and they teach you or you teach each other sometimes but you work it all out you get a lot of confidence you get a lot of rhythm sexually and then you'll just take that mm -hmm. into your next uh, 450 relationships robert he hasn't really found that. He got started at 20, and it seems like he's been bouncing around a lot for the last five years. I would say that if he got with one woman and really just worked it out with that one woman, that he'd find that confidence. And then once he had it with that one woman, he'd probably take that momentum into uh, his next relationship. So that is my uh, advice for you. We'll take a little break. Michelle and Diego Cello is our guest tonight. Bitter is the name for CD, and uh, when we come back, we're going to speak to uh, Dana has an answer to get this guy's... Has... What is that? The guy that had the uh, problem. Oh, the same guy we're just talking to? It's going to be a girl who's going to give me an answer. Perfect. After this. It is the Love Line. I'm Adam Carroll. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Michelle Indegio Cello is our uh, guest tonight. Bitter is the name of her uh, CD. Four and a half stars, says uh, Raves, uh, the Rolling Stone. And uh, album of the year from uh, Vibe magazine. And uh, we're going to hear something else off of that real soon. Also, uh, I'll tell you some of these dates uh, of her uh, upcoming tour with Sting, I believe, is what these dates are from. Right, Michelle? <laughs> And first, we'll go back to the phones and take a call. Dana? Hi. So you're 17. Yes. And you have an answer or a technique for our last caller. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say I love your show. First time caller, long time listener. Thanks. And you're great. And I think you're doing a great job with helping people, too. Wow. Yeah. So here we go again. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. There we go again. Thanks. Um, yeah. Okay. I had a boyfriend, or I was basically just having sex with this guy, and he told me that he never came before with any other girl, and we used condoms at first, and then, like, I don't like them, so I didn't use them. Like, I was safe. He was clean. He was 14, by the way. But go ahead. Yeah. Actually, I was 12. No, I'm just teasing. Um, and I just worked it on top, and that's what you got to do. The girl's got to know what she's doing, and it worked well, and he was taken away, and then... He, he was, was taken kind of away. away. <laughs> Ambulance? What? No, yeah, exactly. I broke his back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I heard it. I all right. Silly. All right. Uh, you, you got a boyfriend now, Dana? Um, well, kind of working on one. I understand, yeah, but you, you really go to town when you work on one. <laughs> all right, well, there you go, all you ladies. Uh, hop on top and go to town. Oh, and suck them off first. <laughs> suck them off first. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Warm them up. Please. All right. Okay. You, uh, all right, Dana. Okay. Be careful now. Oh, yeah. 17 years old. <laughs> Take it easy there. Yeah. All right. Bye. Jeez, where were these chicks when I was in high school? Where were they? I'm telling you, they hadn't been made yet. <laughs> they were still, like, in the planning phase. That's actually true. I remember right. checking that. I'd go down to the lab every once in a while. Where's, where's the shipment of horny bitches? Uh... We've had some funding problems. We're still in the planning stages. We have one in the wind tunnel right now. There's a giant penis uh, heading in her mouth. We're still trying to work out. And then the sirens are whoop, whoop, whoop. And the penis had been broken off. <laughs> she was eating it. And uh, that's when I was ushered out of the lab very quickly. So apparently uh, these women took a few years to come out. But uh, now they're out. They're, in, uh, they're, they're like, the, uh, they're like the, uh, the VW bug. They're uh, everywhere. And uh, I'm too old to drive one. Yeah. Pure turbonium. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Aaron? Yeah? You're 14. Yeah. Um, uh, About like four hours ago, me and um this girl were just having fun with each other, kissing, and then all of a sudden we just started messing around, um, playing around with each other. Uh-huh. Um, and then she just got up on top of me and we had, then we started like having sex 
I don't protect it, and uh, I'm afraid now that she might get pregnant or something. How old is she? Um, 16. Ooh. Should I go back to the lab and talk about that again? 14 and a 6-year-old. No, that's 16. yeah. That's that's big. Sixteen. Are you sixteen? 14. Are you sixteen or fourteen? He's fourteen. I'm fourteen. Yeah. I'm that's uh. That is a serious score when you're like you know eighth grade, ninth grade or something, and you're getting on like a tenth, eleventh grader. Yeah. And she was. She already had. She had sex before. Hold on. I got to pick Drew up off yeah, the floor. Surprise. He, uh, <laughs> yeah. That is, that's not a huge surprise, but uh, she didn't want you to use any protection or anything. Oh, uh, it just like happened in a split second. We weren't really thinking. Right. Did you did you have a quick orgasm? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you're 14. Uh, and and uh, you were inside her, right? Yes. All she right. Got to use the money after pill. Very important. Okay. Um, where can she get it? Planned Parenthood. Her doctor. What state are you in? Um, Tucson. Um, Arizona. 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 We'll be out this weekend, Eric. All right. Won't we? Yeah, I'll be there Friday. All right. We'll come over there. And give you the uh, morning after pill ourselves. Really, it's very important, Aaron. She, she, it's if you use it within the first day, the the probability of prevent, preventing a pregnancy is very, very high. Hey, Aaron, do you guys talk much? Uh, yeah, we do. You do? We just barely started going out about like two days ago. Wow, well, kind of, how does this? You know, I'm a celebrity. I don't get laid that fast. You know what I'm saying? I've got 14 year olds getting something. It, it, it drives me insane. <laughs> Aaron, here's what you need to do. You really need to take care of this. It's not that big a deal. I know when you're 14, everything seems to be sort of monumental and forget it, and you just don't want to do it. But you go down to Planned Parenthood. You explain what happened. They don't ask any questions. Yeah. They give you this morning after pills. She takes it, and you go to sleep tonight not worrying about anything. Right. Pick up some condoms, too, while you're there. All right, next time. Right. All right? All right. All right. All right, and some deodorant. Come on now. You hit puberty, you're with a woman, you're sexual. Let's go, let's clean it up, okay, Harry? All right. All right. Oh, Mary Jane. Yes. Yeah, I think we tried to talk to Mary Jane uh, yes. a while ago. You're 16, what's going on? Um, I've been having, like, these bad thoughts. Like, hey, me and my boyfriend, we talk about sex all the time. Doing doing what with your boyfriend? Talk about sex. Like, mm -hmm. we'll do it, like, we'll do it or something. Yeah. We'll have, like, bad memories or something. And I'll keep, like, giving these thoughts, like... Of my past, uh -oh. my ex boyfriends like I don't know if it's normal. What what thoughts? Like, so I dated an ex marine. You yeah. dated an ex marine? No, I I dated a marine. He's now an ex marine. He's <laughs> out of service now. How long ago was that? Like a year ago. When you were fifteen? Mm hmm. And he was twenty. Oh, Ooh, he should be locked like up. <laughs> like you dated an ex marine? No, he was in the marines. <laughs> now he's out. Yeah, he got out. He was. He said it's for you. He's gonna have to deal with on this show, though. <laughs> all right. So, all right. That's perfectly normal, perfectly healthy for a fifteen-year-old to be dating an enlisted man. Right. He what? He lived with us. The Marine lived with your family. Mm hmm Your dad's not around, is he? Yeah, he is. Why did he let that go on? He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know. Well, you guys live. You guys got a big house. No. This is a two-bedroom. Well, your dad doesn't live there? Uh, he does. How did you... Okay. Oh, I see. I don't know. I'm done asking probing questions. I'm just going to start saying, Oh, I see. I see. You live in a very small house with an ex-Marine. With two bedrooms. Your, your dad Apparently lives there. Room, kids, uh, kids and... Kids and... Somewhere. Sergeant Carter in the next goddamn room. And uh, your dad didn't know about it. And that makes perfect sense. Was he sense. here first? Yes. No, no, no. Okay, what happened? Okay, hold on. Oh, no, no. Reenact that one. <laughs> so, was he your first? <laughs> no, I want to go back to the ex-Marine. <laughs> I dated an ex-Marine. You dated an ex-Marine? No. He was in the Marines. Now he's out. <laughs> All right. He lived in the house. Okay. I, I, all right. Hold on a second. Now, what what line is this? What? Listen to me. Mary Jane, mm -hmm. I know your first impulse is just to say no or deny, or whatever it is, but just listen very closely, okay, before you just say no. First off, how is it that he was able to live with you without your father knowing? Um, okay, my brother was living with us at the time, and his wife was living with us, and, his, and their two kids. In the two-bedroom? Mm-hmm. Two-bedroom with, now, that adds up to about nine people. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. That's in the living room. We had a, we had like a living room, dining room, kitchen, extra like space. Mm-hmm. So 
there like a hideaway bed in there. Mm -hmm. And my brother and his wife had a hideaway bed. Right. Yeah, right. Well, there's t tons of room now for another person, so they just brought in the Marine? Well, oh. I just let her explain it. Uh, this could be interesting to me, yes? <laughs> so he lived with you, though. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? He did this for about seven, eight months. Oh, okay. But how did that happen in, in such a tight household? Okay, my brother and his wife went out for a while, and my parents were out for a while. And it was just him and I. And my parents thought, you know what, my parents trust me, right? Well, yeah. We didn't know we were dating. Uh huh. And we were dating, and we kind of like <laughs> got it off, like started or something. What do you mean? What, what do you mean that your parents went out for a while? They went out to dinner. They went out to dinner. And my brother and his wife and their two kids were gone. They were gone too. All right. I'm okay. still. And so you guys had sex. Mm -hmm. We still have answered the question how this. All right. Let me ask it one more time. A hole happened to be living in the household. Mary. How did he live with you? Live with you, not bang you. Live with you without your father's knowledge. Go ahead. Ready? You have 45 minutes. Go. We understand your brother lived there. We understand there was a Murphy bed. We understand the kids live there. Now, I want you to get back to the question I've been asking you over and over again. How did he live there? Go. He lived here. He had his own bed. He kept... No, no, no. Is he a friend of your brother's? Uh-huh. And he, your brother invited him to stay? Uh-huh. Right. How did he... Here we go. How did so it your father knew he lived there. Uh-huh. But he didn't know you guys were having sex. Why do they let somebody's friend Michelle live? Michelle and Dago Chell, everybody. <laughs> but why do they... A new broom sweeps clean. Do you see what? that, Drew? Yeah, I saw that. You're you need some fresh it. blood in here. You're Not gone. me, you. You too. But here's the question. I uh, still blame Mary Jane. A household with... Uh, I can't blame her. Yes, I do. A household, household that should sleep four with ten people in it. And somebody's friend walks in. They go, "Hey, come on and join us." All right? How did that happen? Okay, all right. How did that happen, Drew? I have to chime in. Yeah, how did that happen? I'm sorry. I mean, not everybody's loaded, and no, but, I think there are households that that communal thing is a can. It's wonderful, consistent. but why would no, you, I mean? But why would you bring a friend in a household that's tight? Right. Why would somebody just bring their friend I, on in? Is he, your brother a marine too? Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. You guys switch chairs. Right. Right. <laughs> Drew, you better no, learn how um, to play the bass. I'll yeah, tell you I'm that. just angry that, you know, I'm, does your brother know that you had sex with this guy? Nope. I mean, all I can say is, look, that your father doesn't know, you're probably not going to tell him your brother doesn't know. Anything that you're ashamed of is usually a problem. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, but, uh, m Mary, this, this guy is out of your life now? Yeah, but he keeps calling me. He keeps calling you. He's still calling me, no, and all me my other boyfriends are still calling tell me. Tell him you're going to tell your brother. Huh? T tell him you'll tell your brother if he calls again. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what he'll think. Okay? <laughs> my brother will kill me. And I, I still don't get the part about ten people living there and your dad saying, eh, what's one more head? <laughs> you know what I mean? One of my brother's uh, jarhead buddies from but the uh, Navy. Moved. Okay, now we moved and we're in a different house. Good. Okay, my brother doesn't live here. No one lives here but me, my mom, and my dad. Good. Fine. But now, okay, I guess... Well, you like this guy. You like the attention, right? No, 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 no. Do you see, listen, you're, you're, you're giggling when you're talking about him. <laughs> I'm in a happy relationship with this guy that I've been with for like almost, six, almost two months now. Your age? My age? I'm 16. Well, what's, his, what's, is what's, he your age? <laughs> is, is he your age? Yes, he is. Oh, okay, no. good. Listen, does he know about uh, Gomer Pyle? Nope. All right, don't tell him. Okay. Gomer uh, Pyle driver. Don't tell him. And, and stop accepting this guy's phone calls. And don't get pregnant. And stop doing drugs. And find Jesus Christ. Oh, I do. I'm, I'm, I've am changed. I've been going to church. Oh, you have? Yes. Whew. Good. I'm in a Bible study for high school and everything. Good. We yeah. keep a lightning rod uh, for the first uh, couple of months. And and I have further south thing. than we know. What's that? I have another thing. No, that's it. When I was... No. Hey, 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 Mary she Jane. Sex, she sexually I, I know. Mary about. Jane, listen to me. Here's the price you have to pay for me taking an hour and 20 minutes to find out uh, the first question. We got to go to break. We spent too long. Uh huh. I was, like, raped, and I was, like, oh boy! Okay. Now, we now I feel bad. We know. <laughs> we know, Mary Jane. Have you gotten any help for this? I don't know. Oh, uh, baby. Uh, stay with your your clergy. Talk stay with about Jesus. It. Yeah. So talk to the clergy at, at at your church about this, and he yeah. will make a determination whether it's appropriate for you to get a referral somewhere. Okay? But was it was it part of that? Yes, this is all part of that. We knew this was there. 
Oh, okay. okay. Like, no one knows that. They're my best friends. Nobody well, knows no, that. we it's know it. And we knew it just talking to you. All right. Come on, honey. Take care of yourself, would you? Okay. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Bye. Oh, boy. It's like, um, you know, when you take kids and you do horrible things to them, it's like you scramble them. I mean... Oh. Yeah, they do. They get this organ. Mary Jane was, like, kind of scrambled. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they, yeah. they don't track. They don't yeah. track properly. It's yeah, that's what it is. They don't They don't know what you're asking or what you're talking about right. or why you'd be asking mm -hmm. it. And, uh, yeah, it's not... They don't think in a lineal way. It's yeah. like the A does not go to B. It's yeah. just everything is its own separate letter floating out in some universe. Oh, baby. All right. And there's always a Marine around every corner. Oh, I wish I'd had uh, Thanksgiving over at that house. That uh, big party ball out uh, out on the table there and uh, some canned turkey. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm going to go kiss my dad. I can't figure out what I'm going to... Well, you know, one show I'm going to kick him in the nuts. The next show I'm going to kiss him. I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. <laughs> Did I tell you when I was uh, on the uh, plane, the one I missed uh, going into uh, Michigan... Uh, uh, last week that I was sitting next to uh, Daniel Stern, yeah, the uh, actor. Yeah. We talked about that on the air? Uh, no. Daniel Stern's uh, actor has done a million movies. He was like uh, the voice of uh, uh, the kid on the Wonder Years. Years, and he's done a ton of work. Anyway, Daniel Stern is sitting there, and he's sitting with his 18-year-old uh, son, and, man, they just look happy. And uh, I say... Uh, Hey, nice to meet you. I'm a fan of your work. And his son's, oh, it's Adam from Loveline and blah, blah, blah. And they're real friendly. And I said, uh, where, where are you guys going? And, oh, we're going, uh, we're going to uh, Michigan. We're looking at colleges. And then we're going to go uh, take in a ball game at Tiger Stadium. Last That's going to be yeah. great. The last game. And I said, uh, uh, mental note, kick dad in nuts uh, when I get back to uh, L.A. But now I'm going to kiss dad's ass for uh, not bringing a Marine in to sodomize me. So I'm uh, somewhere in the middle there. All right. We'll uh, work that out in therapy. And we'll be back after this. Yeah. Hey, it's Loveline. Uh, Michelle Degocello is our guest tonight. Bitter is the name of her uh, highly claimed CD. And uh, Michelle Degocello, let me say something about uh, her. Uh oh. Be no, nice. that'd be a good thing. No, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, maybe uh, doesn't sell as many CDs as uh, a lot of uh, popular acts. But if if you get one of her CDs and you have it floating around the house, the car, the uh, CD tray, you look like you know what you're doing. You. you <laughs> A music sophisticate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People go, oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. Good, good you don't have to listen to it. Just, hey, I'm into her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I'm into her. Been, and you go, just uh, been into her since, and then you just figure out the name. Everyone should figure out the name of everyone's first CD, and then you always quote that. And it makes it seem like you know what you're doing. We're just talking. I'm just looking up here. God, we got some good uh, guests coming yes, in on do. this show. Yes, we do. And uh, we're I just see, talking about... Blake. Lou Diamond Phillips. We were just talking about John Popper, and I was just say Ferris is coming in. I I, I was just looking at uh, like Entertainment Tonight the other day. I think it was like two nights ago or something, and they had some John Popper story. And I was thinking to myself, I love John Popper. Yeah. I think he's like the, one of the nicest guys in the world. I think he's really talented, and I wish he'd come in here again. I wish he'd stop smoking, so we can keep him around here for a little while. Oh, really? He's uh, he's on a diet now. I think. Uh. Michelle, you uh, did you <laughs> did you tour? You toured with Blues Traveler. Yeah. Um, First off, what happened? To the bass player died a couple months ago. Right. Sleep apnea syndrome. Oh, yeah. I, I'll tell you, I I've uh, I did something at uh, House of Blues with those guys. I was telling you about like a year ago yeah. and stuff. And but uh, Michelle probably knows better than I do. But I thought that band was just a bunch of friendly guys. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were really cool guys. And uh, yeah, I, hey, speaking of being friendly, let's play a song from Michelle's. Well, hold on a second. Well, hold I, on, I could be out of show in a few bass minutes. Bass player from Blues Traveler. I know. Time. I, I know. say something well, nice about him. True. Where are you going? You're not going anywhere. Hey, I want her to get her song played before we run out of show. I now. will not let the show run out without uh, Michelle playing uh, her song. All right. Yeah. Don't no, don't so listen to any of your instincts, bro. <laughs> That's your problem. You trust yourself. That's your biggest problem. Mm -hmm. All right, so, Michelle, what? Oh, no, they're all great. We did a lot of, a lot of, spends a lot of time. Yeah. 
So it's, uh, it's sad, but uh, we'll be happy to see John come in here. And I made jam with John, as you oh, know. Oh, not you John, uh, John has been in here three times. Each time, John has brought his harp, as he always does. And I bring one of my various instruments, and I sit in with John in a little impromptu jam-type session. I'm feeling that. So uh, I, so far, I played the saxophone, the uh, guitar, and uh, keyboards. I or maybe I played the saxophone. I, I <laughs> Drew played the keyboard. Sorry, Drew, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, my memory's going. So uh, I'm going to jam with John Popper. We got to. Uh, it's it's a tradition. And now we're going to hear uh, a little uh, Michel and Degas cello. This is off of uh, Bitter, and this one is called "May This Be Love." All right, all right. <sighs> May this be love is the uh, name of that one from uh, Michel and Degas cello off of uh, Bitter. Man, that's I. I could see myself like really getting into some masturbation with that in the background. You know, I mean, very romantic music. You know, really just lighting a candle and really going at myself. You know? <laughs> I mean, like, man, that was beautiful. Thank you. Wow, that really sounded great. Thank you. Yeah. Do you do uh, you do uh, soundtrack work? Yeah. Because it uh, it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I just thought that'd be a great, great piece for a movie. I'm, I, I do. I'm just waiting for the, the right opportunity to present itself. Yeah, that. Uh, it seems like some would just be tailor made for you. All right, we will. Uh, I think we'll take a little break. Why don't we do that now, and then right. we'll come back into a right. question or two. All right, after this, your new policy of ending the show on time. Yes. Yeah. Why not? It was great. Add three right. more minutes to your sleeping time. Yeah, that's good. And and not only. Do we get out of this show on time? But it's 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 two less minutes that we're closer, you know, than to doing the next show. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So it cuts into that. So it works both ways. I think it's like ten hour, ten minutes a week of less work. You're right. And over a year, that could add up to be uh, almost forty five minutes or so. Bitter is the name of the uh, CD. I highly recommend it. As does uh, Rolling Stone and uh, Vibe magazine. Yeah, uh, come on down to Virgin. Uh, the Virgin Store on Sunset tomorrow. It's on Maverick Records, right? Yeah, and um, but come to Virgin and get it because I'll true. be there signing it. Oh, really? So, yeah. Jeez, I could have mentioned that. Yeah. When is <laughs> at seven o'clock tomorrow night? Nobody told me that. No one told you. I'm telling you. Come on down. <laughs> we hang out and talk. Do whatever. Have coffee. Really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm oh, not we'll going go down there. Sleep. Wait a minute. <laughs> You'll be asleep. That, that's on. Uh, you're going to the Virgin on Sunset. Yeah. Sunset in uh, Crescent Heights, yeah, or uh, that's the one. Oh, really? Yeah. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right. I swear, I'm doing work out there. I'm right. done. I'm gonna stop by. All right. <laughs> I don't get enough of me, <laughs> Hey, it's been nine and a half hours, sister. Come on. All right. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. Thank we, you uh, so much do, for having do me. Do appreciate it. It's always a good time, and uh, you should you should come back sooner than uh, three years. Thank you. Like uh, two and a half. <laughs> so until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy. This has been Love Line. The views expressed on Love Line are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. Love Line is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer.